to the churches back in the beginning in these cotton fields, these black people, and there used to be cotton fields all around here, all around here back in the day, playing this this blues, the blues guy singing the blues in a good tone on his back, or he's a harmonica, or a jew harp, or something like that. In the juke joints, they would have that going on, and people would be up dancing and jumping around. Well, see, in the church, nobody played music. There would be a piano in there. I want to be upright. Nobody could play it. The preacher would go bang on it a little bit and go back to preaching. You had a choir singing. I could pull the preacher to preach. Strong voice. Oh, Lord, this in the choir getting behind him, you know, see? But no music. He didn't make that much money. The juke joint man was making all kind of money. The man at the juke house, the juke joint. Two different places, juke house, juke joint. Juke house, where the black people that was in trouble couldn't go to town to the city limit because the police would get them. Wasn't no, wasn't no black police at them times. You follow me? What went on at the juke house stayed out there. If anybody got killed or hurt anything, they didn't care about that. Y'all deal with it. That's out there. But if you got up in the city limits and this kind of thing went on, then the law will deal with you. You see? You had your honky tonk on that kind of, you heard of that kind of place? That was over there on that side of the road. Black people couldn't go there. White people couldn't go to the juke joint or juke house. Some of them went along because their black friends would let them come. But even at that time, black folks didn't have no trouble with white people, man. They didn't have no trouble with that. It was the other way around. You bother me? But it's done come a long way now. Thanks to people like Eric Presley, uh, a lot of the guys from Europe over there, Clapton and all these people. But Eric Presley from right over in Tupelo. Yeah, my grandfather, Rosie Johnson, they lived on Edwards, them grandpa's them place. Back over there, around Tupelo line back in, they knew him well. And uh, he got to come around them all the time. Come to the black churches. He would go to the juke joints. My daddy used to talk about this all the time. Grandpa them talk about, oh, no, oh, Elvis. They knew him well. He got to be around them. He learned, learned to dress. That's one of them blues guys and, and preachers. That's where he got that from. Looking flashy. Black people. In Africa, you got a lot of them big wheels over there like that. Yes. Evans got to hang around all this. He learned 
the, the black folk, how they move around on stage, that, that energy and stuff. He learned that, all that stuff the best he could, but he had an idea too. I never met him, but I bet you, if I can do this and carry it out amongst white people, it put me in a high bracket. It happened just like that. You bother me? It happened just like that. Boy, boy, boy. It was all on this music. <laughs> Talking about my baby, but we really ain't talking about my baby. We just have to use that for a phrase, you follow me? They're talking about something else, but they really couldn't say. Because if Master had to find out really what they were really talking about, a lot of them, a lot more would have been lynched, you see what I'm saying? So they keep them on they done it in code. Further on down the road, somebody gonna hurt you like they hurt me. On down the road. They weren't talking about this old lady. They talking about the person they working for. You follow me? Further on down the road. <laughs> but they think you're talking about that woman. But, but the blues ain't played like that no more. It just played now. You follow me? People just it just played. Now, white people, they play the blues. They into it now. Everybody got the blues, man. The blues don't care about no color. You yeah, like death. Don't care about what color you is. You've got to leave here. You see? Now, the blues are like that. It don't care about no color. Everybody got the blues. Everything that lives got the blues. But expressing the blues, a black person with genius at it, this music, it started with them. It's a black thing. And when black people get together and they can let all this frustration off of them. Where they can say what they want to say. And the black people just listen to it. But as it got bigger and bigger and bigger, then white people started getting into it. Then this rock and roll thing come out, which ain't nothing but the blues. Played fast with a different name. You follow me? The white people liked it. But the black people, so so on. So so on it. But the black blues people, they didn't like it. Because they felt like the black people turned their back against them on it. This is not really rock and roll. John Lee Hooker sure didn't like it. It's the blues with another name. You see, it's good for you. My daddy, Eddie Bean, played it for us one time. We didn't know he could play the blues or whatever. Didn't know he could play the instrument. But when I first heard it, man, I fell in love with it. Then all my friends, my daddy's friends, start coming around. Coming right here to the old place. On this place at the old house. And these people didn't have no instruments. Some of them have a guitar card, but didn't have a guitar. Some of them have a guitar amplifier, don't have a card or a guitar with it. You had that though. But what the rest of it? Didn't have it. So they passed the guitar around, you know. But my daddy had the guitar amplifier and everything. He did. It was good, man. Mr. R. Red Jr. Kim and them used to come here, R. Red Burnside, all these people used to come around here. I never got to meet Hollywood for Muddy Waters, but my daddy, them all knew him. 
Now, I know this grandpa said, now boy, now, John Brown, see, there were so many of us in the family, he didn't know none of our names. Everybody had one name, John Brown, let's point at you. You, John Brown, you, you, you. They didn't know the names. Mississippi Delta people, they had the slides and stuff, you know. The Northeast Mississippi here, country guys, they didn't. Delta thing, here, country. The guy used to slap all them picks. They used to picks. You follow me on the fingers? But here, country guys, them slapping. You said what they call it? Mississippi Delta. It was just as many up here in North Mississippi. And you had maybe five or six went professionally. That was Leroy Foster, where I am going. He was the first drummer for Muddy Waters. That was Mississippi Fred McDowell, Mode Como. All right, Burnside, them used to follow him around, you see. You had the Highland Wolf. You had Big Joe Williams, Mr. Bucker White, five. It was tons of others around here. Why they didn't go try to make a living with this? They didn't want to take a chance on it. Leaving the fields, going from the cotton fields to the cotton gin, from that to the factories, you follow me? My daddy left the fields in 69, 68 and went to the recapping tires in Tupelo at Max Tire Center. You ever heard of it? It's a famous place now. Max Tire in Tupelo. All my brothers worked there but me. Their family went there. My daddy went there in 68, and he retired out of there, and he died in 85, around by 81, 82. I don't want to be no slave. I want you to work all day. I don't want it to be true. I just want to spend some time with you. you. 